No fans. This time on Bandit Patrol, two raptors rescued. <laughs> but one flat out refuses to wrangle prey. In the wild, you're going to have to fight for your food. If they cannot take live prey, they will starve to death. Then a litter of curious critters. Are you guys hungry? Turns into tag team rehab. I think I have the easy job, and she thinks she has the easy job. Come on, open it. It's a win win. And. Oh my gosh, what happened to you? A paralyzed skunk fights to regain her footing. We're going to do it. We're going to save her. The sun is shining on the waters of Yellow Creek Park in Owensboro, Kentucky. Which one is it? The lighter color beak. OK. Licensed wildlife rehabilitators Kristen Allen and her son, Grant, are on a mission to help a not-so-lucky duck. Mom, why are you eating the bread we're going to feed the <laughs> ducks with? It's good bread. They're not going to eat this whole thing. Sharing is nice. Mom. <laughs> Here you go, guys. We get a call about a duck that has a fishing line wrapped around it and a hook in its beak. Every time I walk up to the lake, the geese start going honk, 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 honk. It's that lady in the pink shirt again. If they would just understand that I'm trying to help them, it would just be so much easier. But they don't understand people, so they talk and I chase. Here you go, guys. If it gets closer, I'll just grab it. Just, you just... gotta do something. <laughs> All right. I got him. Here we go. <laughs> ha. You wanna hold him? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, bless his little heart. Uh, it looks like it's swollen, so it's been in there for a day or two, it looks like. There you go. Now that should make it easier for you. Where's your tats? That's OK, buddy. You got it? Yeah. There's a little hook on the other oh. side of it, so it's hard for me to pull it straight up. Can I look at his mouth for a second? It's OK. I'm guessing somebody was fishing, and the duck decided to go get the bait, and it got stuck in his mouth. And the guy just cut the fishing line, so the duck was stuck with the fishing hook and then got the line wrapped around his leg. Look, you've even got sinkers on you, dude. I'm going to hold his head. I'll get his foot. Yeah. You're OK, baby. I'm just going to this. And there you you're go. free. Go to your friends. They're right over there. Go on. Go, go, go. <laughs> what did they do to you? Tell me all about it. Aww. <laughs> Cutest thing ever. It only took us about an hour to get this duck, which usually it takes way longer than that. But to spend one hour of my time to help a duck that'll make his life better, it is so worth it. That wasn't bad. That was much easier than it usually is. No two animal rescues are ever the same. You are the cutest little things ever. And no one knows this better than licensed wildlife rehabilitator Nikki Christian, whose latest arrival, a litter of raccoons, were found orphaned at a nearby farm. Hey, JC. Yeah. I need your help, babe. Come here, look what we just got in. Caring for animals just comes natural to me. It's what I was born to do. My daughter, JC, has that same passion, that same drive that I do. It makes me proud to watch how she is with animals. She can understand them even better than I can. What's that? Let's tick. Do me a favor. Just in case there are more, go get me some alcohol so I can drop them in there. It's OK. Out in the wild, the mom raccoons actually pick the ticks and any other parasites off of the babies. The fact that these raccoons have ticks on them makes me think that the mom was probably gone for a few days. Ticks love to hide in between their fingers. Look, there's one right there. Man, those are tiny. Their hands are so sensitive. A raccoon's forepaw is nearly as sensitive as a human's hand. OK, babe, we're almost done. 
if you don't mind, to please go get wormer medicine for them and then get some electrolytes for me. Oh, you have a coinness. Any raccoons that come in, I give them dewormer and electrolytes. The dewormers protect them from any worms and parasites they might have. Got all kinds of good stuff in there for them. The electrolytes help with dehydration and the lack of food and water. You don't want to give them milk right away if you don't know how long it's been since they've ate. So we kind of want to get everything activated and going again. Baby raccoons need to be fed every three hours. That means through the night as well. And with my nursing job, I just don't have the time to do it. So they're actually going to go to Nancy for a little while, and she's going to get them good, fat, and sassy and bring them back to me. Let's just kind of get them by until uh, Nancy can get them. Meanwhile, at the Allen house, Kristen's daughter and licensed rehabber, Adrian, has brought home a new feathered friend. Mom, we have another bar now. Okay, let me see. Smaller than the other one. Come here, baby. So what happened to them, did they say? They cut down the tree, and the baby fell out of the hole on okay. the tree. A lot of times, barred owls make their nests in hollow trees. So probably what happened to this barred owl is that after the tree was cut down, the parents abandoned him, and so he was basically left for dead. He feels good. You're a little bit smaller than Harriet. Lucky for this barred owl, two weeks ago, we got another barred owl that we named Harriet. We're going to put these two barred owls together in this enclosure that Grant made. It's basically a hollow tree, just like they had in the wild. Ready, bud? I'm going to put you in here, and you get to see your new friend. Yeah, you're quite a bit smaller. What's he doing? Are they looking at each other? No. <laughs> I'm putting this plexiglass between them initially just to make sure that they're going to get along. At this age, birds of prey can get aggressive, especially if food is scarce. So it's really important that we provide them with lots of food and that they get to know each other before we actually put them together. All right, let me get a mouse and see if we can get this guy to eat. Out in the wild, baby barred owls eat rodents and other small mammals, which their parents feed to them in the nest. When I stick my hand in there, I don't want anyone to see a human hand. I'm just going to see my little owl puppet instead. You take it? Yep, you took it. Aww. He's hungry. He is hungry. Do you think you should feed Harriet, too, so that she doesn't feel left out? Yep. What do you think we should name the new one? I don't know. What do you want to name it? Tubman. So cute. We're going to keep Harriet and Tubman in this nesting stump until they're about five or six weeks old, because that's about the age that they would fledge the nest. Then we're going to take them to Western Kentucky Raptor Center so they can really spread their wings. A hundred miles away in Louisville, Kentucky. Looking good, looking good, good. Licensed wildlife rehabber Bridgette Williams starts her day by repairing some collision damage on an injured turtle. This little guy had been run over by a car. And the shell is really broke all the way through. This is a fiberglass car repair kit. I bought it at a car repair store. They asked me what kind of car I was repairing. <laughs> <laughs> With wildlife rehabilitating, you definitely have to think out of the box. You have to do creative things. And just over years of experience, you pretty much learn what is going to work. He's not going to have it ingested. It's just, just going on the shell surface. But this is going to harden, and it's going to be essentially just attached to a shell. And so that piece will stay on forever? It will, yep. Once he's all done, he is going to go back in the same spot where he's found, off the road, though. I remember being a child and finding a turtle, and it was the most exciting adventure ever. It doesn't matter what type of wildlife it is, it deserves a chance at life. Turtles included. Okay, I think we're good. With the turtle tuned up, Bridgette hits the road to rescue another animal who needs her help. Two little skunks have been wondering about a local nursery. I am in a hurry because one of the employees were only given an hour to find other means of getting rid of these skunks before an animal extractor company comes. It's very important for me to get to this nursery before the animal extractor company because I know the end result is not always life that is offered to these animals. We saw them running. Down. Okay. 
supply here. Okay. It came down to the stick farm. Okay, when was the, oh, so that goes all the way to that busy road too. They think the mama skunk got hit by a car. Where was the, oh, I, I think I see one. It's on the other side of the fence though. It's in their yard. I might have to go around and ask these people if I can go in their yard. I'm just gonna take a look over to see if I see two. You know what, it's gonna be near impossible to get them over here. They're under a big log pile right now. I thought this was going to be an easy rescue, but this little baby skunk is proving to be quite difficult to get. I'm gonna have to show a little bit more patience and wait it out. Kentucky, the orphaned baby skunk wildlife rehabilitator Bridgette Williams just rescued is hurt badly. Oh gosh, her little back legs are just, oh. you can see her drag wounds. So she's been doing this for a little while. This little girl is in big trouble. She has some open and infected wounds and her little legs are just non-responsive. She needs some help ASAP. I'm leaving some instructions with the employees on what to do if they should come upon this other skunk. But for now, I have to get this little girl back because she is in bad shape. Poor little boo. She has some fly eggs by her feet. She has a big glop right here. Fly eggs on a live animal is a bad sign. I'm trying to get these off quickly. They hatch very soon after the fly lays them. They turn into maggots, and they do start burrowing down into her flesh and start eating flesh. I'm sure the flies thought this little gal's close to dying. I know it's scary. If I didn't find her, I'd probably say she would have lasted maybe another day or two, and that's it. I'm so glad I was able to get this skunk, but she just does not look good. It worries me that she is so unresponsive. I plan on calling a vet and getting her over there right away. As a mother of two, licensed wildlife rehabber Nancy Reynolds is used to taking care of crying babies. You ready? But these baby starlings give a whole new meaning to round-the-clock care. Baby birds are definitely a full-time job. They have to eat every 30 minutes. It is really important for me to keep up a crazy feeding schedule with these birds because their metabolism is really high, so they have to eat from daylight till dark. These little babies were actually found underneath a semi-truck. I guess it had set for a little while, so the mom had made a nest, had time to hatch the babies, but they decided to use that truck. And when they come in with a shipment, some ladies that were unloading the truck heard the babies crying and found the nest under there. I can't believe they were actually in this huge truck going down the road, probably on a highway, and those birds didn't fall out of that nest. They're still so active and lively. I mean, I don't know how they made it. These baby birds are actually going to go to the wildlife sanctuary where they have somebody that specially does birds and has time to do this all day long. With the baby starlings taken care of, it's time for Nancy to head for Nikki's house to be a surrogate parent all over again. Nikki called and said she had some raccoons that she needed some help with. When she gets tiny babies in that need every two, three hour feedings, she can't do those because she works a lot. So she gives me the smaller babies. Our relationship works beautifully because I think I have the easy job and she thinks she has the easy job. So it's a win-win. Look at that. I mean, seriously. These raccoon babies are around three to four weeks old. 
at this age, they have to grow and get healthy and strong. Need a lot of attention right now. Go ahead and give them warmer for the row arm. They had all kinds of little ticks in between their little fingers. We got those out, and um, I just gave them some electrolytes. Oh, all right, I don't want to give them up, but I'm going to. You'll see them again. I know. Nancy's going to have her hands full for the next couple of weeks. But when she gets them eating solid food, then I'll get them back, and then I get to teach them the things they need to know to survive in the wild. All right, thanks. All right, I appreciate it very much. I know they're in good hands. You ready to eat? You ready to eat? Once at home, Nancy and her daughter Whitney begin feeding the raccoon kits, a routine they'll repeat several times a day for the next few months. You can't chew, you gotta suck on it. Come on. I'm gonna hold his little nose a, just a little bit so he can suck on it while he's just chewing. In the beginning, getting a baby raccoon to take the bottle is not as easy as it looks. Some of them will bite it and chew on it, and it takes a couple of times to get them to eat. All right. You feeling better? Did you burp? Mm. Mm, got your belly full. With the baby raccoons, we always try to burp them, just because when you eat out of a bottle, it does get air in your belly. It does that for babies and everybody else. All right, Whitney's got the dirty job today. You wanna go to Whitney, go potty. Your turn. She gets stimulated to use the bathroom. In the wild, their mom would lick them and make them go. We're gonna use baby wipe and make them use the bathroom. When you get babies in this young, it's a lot of late nights and a lot of feedings, a lot of booties to be wiped. There is a whole lot to do. All right, let's try it. When they're eating on their own, they're off the bottles, they will be ready to go back to Nikki's. <laughs> no, you've had your food. After three weeks of getting to know each other, Fledgling barred owls Harriet and Tubman are like two peas in a pod. Maybe with your brother? Mm -hmm. Sister? I wasn't real worried when I removed that plexiglass because Harriet and Tubman were getting along great. They're eating well, they're getting their flight feathers, and they're getting along just like brothers and sisters. All right, guys, let's go. They're ready to go to Western Kentucky Raptor Center, and then the real challenges begin for them. Get these guys in here. You can just go ahead and open that one. <laughs> Is it heavy? I built it for easy transport. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> All right. In you go, guys. Come on. Come out, guys. Go. Oh, they're gonna climb once they start. Look oh. at him. He's like, I can climb. I can do this. It's okay. Do you want to come out with your brother? Kristen and Grant have placed a pink band on Harriet's leg so they're easier to tell apart. I said, we've never been out anything this big before. This is a big step for Harriet and Tubman. At this age, they need to be climbing out of their stump stretching their wings, jumping from perches, and getting to be big owls. Look at them looking around. Birds of prey, always looking up to the highest place. Oh, oh good, <laughs> good job, buddy. Look at them. <laughs> All right, where are you going to go now? That's what they do out in the wild. They climb back up in the tree with their beak and their talons so that they can get back in the nest. Harriet, you're doing just what you were supposed to do. I'm very proud of you. Once we get these birds' wings stronger, their next step is taking live prey. You're going to have to get down so we can get out. Just come over onto this branch. This is a good branch for you. Come on. Harriet and Tubman are actually at a disadvantage not having parents to teach them how to hunt. So they're going to have to learn how to do it on their own. The orphan baby skunk rescued at the nursery is in bad shape. Today's vet visit will tell Bridgette just how bad this little skunk's injuries really are. 
when I bring skunks to see Dr. Jewel. Hey! Uh -huh. Just in case our skunk sprays, we have our own special table outside. Let me tell you about this little girl. Okay. She had been orphaned for almost a week. They think that they had seen mom hit by a car. She did have some fly eggs, and they were on her little feet pads. Too. Yeah. Yeah. And I also saw her back legs dragging. OK. Can she pee? Because that's the biggest question with pine limb paralysis. If they've damaged the nerves, either for defecation or urination, then that's when we have a lot of trouble. Her bladder feels pretty distended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's bladder. Very full. This little skunk has such a full bladder, which tells me that she probably has not been able to go to the bathroom on her own for quite some time. And that is very concerning to me. Let's go in and then we'll get x-rays and see if we see any fractures or abnormalities in the spine. I'm really, really hoping that this poor little skunk does not have a severed spine. If that's the case, no matter how much I want to help this little girl, there's nothing that we can do. What do you think could have caused it? With an animal that seems to be healthy in every other way, I would think some sort of trauma. Possibly getting clipped by a car if she was out wandering around and just got bumped and not run over. Everything's symmetrical. It doesn't look like anything shifted or out of alignment too badly. The good news is I don't see any obvious fractures or displacements of bone that might indicate to me a more serious trauma. We could have just a neurologic injury, which may recover with care. I like that word, <laughs> recover. Today could have gone either way with the x-ray and the test results, but I feel like all the stars are lining up. It's definitely going in the skunk's favor. I think it's worth a shot. OK. If we can manage to keep her bladder expressed. Empty, yeah. Our biggest concern is her ability to empty her bowels and her bladder. The nerves in that lower spine can be affected to the point that she cannot do that. So that's kind of our big issue. Hopefully, things will improve gradually. OK. And yeah. let me know if something's going wrong. OK. I get a little bit more emotionally attached to the animals that are more of the underdog. This little skunk definitely would be classified as an underdog. I am committed to doing whatever it takes to get this little gal back on her feet again. We're going to do it. We're going to save her. At the Western Kentucky Raptor Center, barred owls Harriet and Tubman are mastering their flying skills. Let's see how they're doing. Yeah, I can't wait to see them fly. Here's one. Oh, there's the other one. How are you guys flying, huh? Do it, Tubman. Good job. You guys have grown out of your stumps. It is so exciting seeing Harriet and Tubman fly. This is exactly what they're supposed to be doing at this stage of development. <laughs> it's very important that when we get larger owls in as babies, that we start them in a small space and we gradually move them into bigger spaces. We don't want them to stretch their wings too far to begin with. It takes little baby steps. All right, you ready, Tubman? You can hop up here. Show your sister what you can do. I'm going to put her over here, see where she wants to go. I'm going to give them some time just to get comfortable. Then when I come back, I'm going to bring them some live prey to see how good they are at hunting. All right, guys. I brought you something. Live mice. A lot of people think that it's cruel to feed live prey to things. But if I don't give these birds live prey so that they learn how to hunt, they will starve to death. I guess since there's two of you, I need to put two in here, don't I? Look at them looking at it. There you go. That's Harriet. She's thinking about it. There she goes. Oh. You're just not sure what to do, are you? Oh, oh, good job. She's a little clumsy, but she did it. I'm really hoping that Tubman watches his sister and learns from her. Kind of like in a family, the big sister teaches little brother the ropes. Tubman's looking at it. He's thinking about it. Go on. 
Tubman, don't let her show you up. Tubman, dude, right here. Tubman. Let me try it over here because Tubman really likes to fly over here. Distracted, he can't focus. I know that Tubman is eventually gonna get this. That is the beauty of having two baby bar dolls. As long as he keeps watching Harriet, I think that he'll learn how to do it. At three months old, the orphaned raccoons have grown into curious little troublemakers. Hey, babies, you ready to go back to Nikki's? ready to leave Nancy's babying behind and begin survival training. These little raccoons, it's amazing to see how fast they grow. You guys ready to go for a ride today? Mm -hmm. It does make you sad because, you know, you've put a lot of time and work into them. You've kind of bonded with them a little bit. I'm going to miss them, but I'm not going to miss all the work that goes along with it sometimes. I was just finishing up. Hi, babies. What are y'all doing? It's been so long since I've seen you. Y'all have gotten so big. These raccoons are juveniles now. This is the time that the mom would be taking them out and showing them all the ropes. But now, I kind of have to kick them in the butt and get them more independent and ready for the wild. I think we should just let them explore for a little while and then come back and put some food and water and They'll be fine. They just had food before they came, so. Okay. They're like, let me out. All right, come on, check it out. There's all kinds of places to go. It's always fun to see the raccoons explore for the first time, but there's a few of them that are stuck on their mama like you wouldn't believe. Are you gonna get off mama? Huh? You need to go play. This is why we do this at this stage. They love her, they know that she's a safe place, but if these raccoons stay too attached to humans, they could not survive out in the wild. Time for some tough Nikki boot camp. After a hopeful prognosis from the vet, Brigitte is more determined than ever to save her little paralyzed skunk. Hi, Fancy. Hold on, hold on, I'll help. She's even given her a name, Fancy. Nerve damage is very tricky. Sometimes it repairs itself pretty quickly, and sometimes it can't be fixed all the way at all. It's too early for me to say what the end result will be, but I'm in for the long haul with her. Since she can't go to the bathroom on her own, I'm just gonna squeeze her bladder because she needs to pee. Oh, big yawn. Anybody that calls me crazy for expressing a skunk's bladder and bowels, that's fine. But if we don't make her go to the bathroom, that could be the difference between her life and her death. I think she bit her tail. Hey, Molly, do you mind giving me a hand over here? When an animal comes in like Fancy, I have to observe them so much more than I would just a healthy animal coming in. Any slight change in behavior is a red flag that something else could be going on. You can let her just sit down here. Yep. Just like this? Mm-hmm. Exactly. I think the feeling is coming back in her tail, and she bit it. Fancy biting her tail is a catch-22. I hate that she bit the tail. However, this is a great sign. It means that she's starting to have feeling back in her tail again. Do you think she'll be able to walk? I would love it if she can have limited mobility, even just to walk for short periods of time. I really, really want this little skunk to walk again. So another very important thing that I have to do daily is physical therapy with her. All I'm gonna do is just push in on her legs just a little bit. This helps keep all the muscles working internally, not just her legs, but it helps her to be able to go to the bathroom on her own, and of course, we want her to do that independently. I feel a tiny bit of resistance there. They're not quite the limp noodles as they used to be. I'm starting to see some signs of movement on her own. We're definitely heading in the right direction. Good job, Fancy. Hi, Jay. We 
help me pull these eggs, please? At Nikki's survival boot camp, the orphaned raccoons are about to get their paws dirty. I want to see if they can actually open these eggs. I want to see those little hands working and pulling them open. The egg goes in the middle. And then put a little bit of peanut butter on the edge. I just want to be able to smell the peanut butter. And I'm hoping it kind of, you know, entices them to kind of dig and open them up. Let's hide the eggs and have our own little Easter egg hunt. Raccoons, they're scavengers. In the wild, they're going to have to open nuts. They're going to have to open eggs up. Easter eggs are just a quick, easy way for me to be able to see what they can do. Good morning, loves. You can grab that dirt, Jay. I appreciate it. You ready to play? If you'll take a couple of these eggs and put them back there, and then I'll take the rest here and pour you know, some dirt on it. I want them to hunt for it just a little bit. By foraging for things like insects, snakes, and even dead rodents, raccoons help clean up the environment. Our little hands go like nonstop. Oh, I like the fact that they're trying to bite some of them too. Open. That's what do you do out in the wild? Open it. Come on. Uh huh. <laughs> He's got it open. Good job, buddy. Open it, come on, open it. There's another one, so that's two. All of those little thousands of never ending to end their fingers, this is what they're for. Good job, buddy. I think they're all doing a pretty dang good job. They've done everything that I need them to do. They need a couple more weeks to grow, and they'll be out the door. They rocked it. They didn't take long for those little hands to start working and open those eggs and find those awesome treats that I had for them. If they keep on doing all the things that I see them doing right now, by the end of December, they'll be ready to be released. Hi, skunkers. <gasps> she has pooped on her own. That's a huge, huge step for her. Good job, Fancy. Woohoo! Fancy pooped on her own today. That is such a huge hurdle that she is now over. We'll go for swim time. Now that Fancy has improved, she's going to go for a swim. Water therapy is a really good thing to do for animals that can't really hold up their own body weight. In the water, all that weight just disappears, and it allows freedom to move the muscles. There you go. Gunks have a natural instinct to do what is similar to a doggy paddle. I'm really not seeing her legs move at all. Just a little more, just a little more. I was really hopeful when putting Fancy in the pool that her legs would automatically move. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing that at all. I think she's getting kind of tired. I think she's done for today. So even though she's able to go to the bathroom now, I'm coming to the reality that Fancy is probably not going to make her way back into the wild. That does make me a little sad. She's a good girl. After several failed attempts, Barred Owl Tubman still can't seem to catch his own dinner. What are we gonna do with him, Harriet? Kristen hopes the move to an even larger space will finally get him hunting like his adopted sister, Harriet. Tubman, you gotta be able to go with your sister. Taking live prey is the final step that these birds need to take to be released back out in the wild again. Yes, I know, Harriet. You're ready for your food. Harriet has totally mastered hunting, but Tubman just doesn't get it. So my plan today is putting out several mice. We'll hope that Harriet catches hers, and then Tubman watches and learns. Here she goes. <sighs> Look at him. You want to share? Would, would you like to just share that mouse with me? Because I'm kind of a lazy hunter. Yeah, just, just give me that one. She's not going to feed you, dude. I don't know what's going on with Tubman. He's watched Harriet do it. He is totally capable of doing it. And he's just not doing it. All right, Harriet. You got to come with me. I'm thinking if I remove Harriet, Tubman may step up his game. I don't know. It's not fair, is it? 
If Tubman doesn't take live prey, it not only pushes back his release, but it also pushes back Harriet's release. In the wild, they would have nest mates that they would go out with. So it's very important, not only to me, but to them, that they be released together. Tubman, you ready? Let's try this. I'm not sure why Tubman is testing my patient so much, but I have to make sure that he can take live prey. I'm running out of options, but the survival depends on it. All right, Tubman, Grant and I are gonna talk about this, see what our plan G is with you. An hour and a half away, Bridgette has come up with a new way for Fancy to get around. Just because Fancy can't walk doesn't mean that she needs to be confined into a small little cage. I'm going to help her out and make a sweet little chariot for Fancy to use for walking. This is my very first attempt at making wheels to help her get around just a little bit better. She's so little right now. Companies just don't make itty bitty wheelchair carts for these animals. This is the cutest little shin guard. It belonged to my son when he was three. He's now 19, I just happened to find these, and I think this will be great to put her little body in if I just attach some wheels on here. Fancy is a sweet little skunk. She's a great patient, but I have to say, I'm very curious how she's going to react. It's not every day I try to squish a little baby skunk into a wheelchair. This all sounds so good in theory. <laughs> we'll see if it works. Tubman the barred owl's inability to hunt live prey has put both his and Harriet's release in jeopardy. All right, Tubman, are you ready? If I'm going to release these two barred owls together, the clock is really ticking for Tubman. I know he's capable of doing it. He's watched Harriet do it. He just needs to take the stinking live prey. You have no idea how many times I've been out here trying to give him live prey, and he just won't do it. And I don't know if he's intimidated because I'm in here, but I don't want to release one without the other. Okay, so we'll put up these cameras and we'll leave. And then we can watch from the outside. Yeah, hopefully this works. Keeping my fingers crossed. All right. So it occurred to Grant and I that out in the wild, there's not gonna be humans standing there watching a bird take live prey. So we decided to set up cameras and we'll watch from outside the door. All right, you have the phones synced up? Yeah. Fancy schmancy. Come on, buddy. Oh, oh, look, <laughs> look, all right. Oh, OK. You got that one. Yeah. Let's see if he's going to come back and get the second one. Awesome. All right. We he, got both of them. Yeah, he got both of them. He did good. He did good. He knew what to do. He just wasn't going to do it when I was watching. But little did he know, I was watching. This is great news. Yeah, so. this is awesome. Now they can go together. Survival school is over for the orphaned raccoons. All right, guys, it's time to go. And graduation day is finally here. These raccoons have surpassed every test that I have given them. There is no doubt in my mind they'll be able to survive and thrive in the wild. Come here, monkey. Lay down. You were getting so big. I have the perfect location for me to release these guys. We have about 200 acres of our family's property, and it's about five minutes away from the house. I think these raccoons are going to do amazing. All right, Jay. Grab the dog food, since you're stronger than I am. I do a soft release on all my animals. It's just the way that I do this. I usually bring some type of dog food, just so they have a backup until they find their food source. See underneath that log? put some underneath there, and the final place over there. So no matter what direction, they can still find some food. These raccoons are actually going to love these logs. There's all kinds of little crevices and places they can hide. It's near the water source, near the woods, so it's all around perfect for them. 
Ah, baby. All right, I know, I know. Come on now. Okay, she can go ahead and open that door, I think. It's a new crazy world. Oh, new smells. There he goes. Being a wildlife rehabber is not just a job for me. This is my heart and my soul. I taught these raccoons everything that I could, and the fact that they are where they're at right now today because of what I've done, it makes me feel great. Bye, guys. It's a big day for Fancy the Skunk. Her wheels are ready, and she's about to take her first test drive. i make you a car, baby. You can walk with this. Fancy has come a long way since I first rescued her. And she is even more special now because she is the very first skunk ever at Second Chances to have a wheelchair. There you go. Come on, Fancy. Come on, baby girl. Here she goes, come on, babies! Yay! Good girl. She's going, she's going. I'm very pleased with today's first attempt at her wheels. She doesn't seem to be struggling. She's not fighting to get out. I don't think she's overly stressed. There she goes. Good girl. When she gets a little bit bigger, a little bit more confident in her wheels, I'll be able to take her out to show children that might have physical impairments themselves. I would much prefer to release all the skunks that come in to me because they do play an important role in the environment. Fancy's role is gonna be a little bit different, but every bit as important. She is going to become an educational ambassador. She will go teach children and adults the importance of wildlife. Come here, sweet thing. Good job, good job. After being under Kristen's protective wing, barred owls Harriet and Tubman are finally ready to soar. That's Harriet. Good job. You are awesome. I am so proud of Harriet and Tubman. That's probably why you're the goalie on the soccer team, huh? <laughs> they have mastered every skill that they're going to need in the wild. They went from climbing to flying to hunting live prey. I have no doubt in my mind that these owls are going to do great in the wild. Here goes your pink band. You don't need this anymore. Doesn't matter who's who in the wild. Goodbye, Western Kentucky Raptor Center. Hello, big, beautiful world. I'm sure there are tons of mice down here. Oh, yeah. With all these cornfields, soybean fields, they're going to have more mice and rodents than they could possibly want. There are trees, there are woods, there are open fields. This is the perfect spot to release Harry and Tubman. On three or on go? On three. On, on three, Again. got it. OK. One. One, two, three. Two, three. <laughs> to teach my children that we're very much doing something good for the world. We're all part of that beautiful circle of life. And what's important is that we all do our part. Harriet and Tubman are going to do theirs, and I've done mine.